Oh, this fish got some power. Oh my gosh, a lot of power in this fish. It's gotta be a nice brown. Oh my God, it's a tiger. Welcome back guys and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. I am out here today on Secret Stream A, a wild trout stream with both brookies and browns. Uh, and the very first wild trout stream that I ever introduced you guys to on this channel. We're getting towards the end of June. Within the next couple weeks, this stream will in all likelihood begin to rise into that temperature range where it would be irresponsible and, and potentially injurious to the to the trout on this stream to continue catch and release fishing for them. A lot of studies have generally showed us that somewhere in the range of 68 to 70 degrees, the likelihood of survival after a fish is released tends to start dropping sharply. Generally speaking, past mid-July, I don't typically hit Secret Stream A because I know this stream generally rises to about 68 degrees by then and will continue to climb another couple degrees over the course of summer. But right now, the temperature is still excellent. So the last thing before we wrap it up and get started here is why am I back at Secret Stream A? Well, Secret Stream A, roughly one year ago, I caught my first ever wild tiger trout. Remarkably, just a couple weeks ago, I caught my second ever wild tiger trout on this same stream. So I've gotten two wild tigers out of this stream. I mean, that's pretty extraordinary. Wild tiger trout are incredibly rare. And so I've gotten two now in just a year's time out of this stream. And uh, I'm interested to see if we can bump into yet another on this outing. Uh, it is supposed to rain sporadically throughout the day today, so I'm definitely going to be getting soaked. Yeah, let's cut the talking here, get geared up, and get down to the stream. Now, as for conditions on this stream, the water is running low, but I would say it's about average, you know, uh, for, uh, for late June. So I wouldn't say unusually low. Now, I realize I've kind of gotten started here without really going over my rig or anything yet. I will go over what I'm fishing with, what I'm throwing, um, and, and kind of discuss that soon, but Let's, let's get a fish in the net first, and then we'll start kind of taking breaks for a little more narration. I don't want to subject you guys to too much talking up front, right? Lots of bugs out today. For a rainy day, there's a surprising number of little gnats and mosquitoes. Oh yeah, now it's coming down. Uh, that's the good stuff getting seriously rained on right now. Trying to just kind of hang out beside this, beside this tree here to kind of shield me from some of the really heavy stuff. And hopefully it subsides. Uh, the rain has kind of picked up and then cooled off, picked up and cooled off over the last 10 minutes or so. Yep, totally soaked through. All right, guys, well, I'm continuing to get absolutely poured on right now. You know what? I'll live. It's not all that cold today. It's like 70 degrees, but I am already completely soaked through. I am uh, under the cover of a bridge here. Now, it is still downpouring out there, <laughs> but I just kind of wanted to go over with you what has happened in the last 20 minutes as this downpour has really set in. Now, I entirely expected it was gonna rain a little bit today. What I did not anticipate was that it was going to rain nearly as hard as it has been. 
And the result has been that this stream went from shallow and crystal clear to rapidly rising water, which is quite literally colored like chocolate milk. It's, it's opaque. And I mean, this all happened within just the last 20 minutes. So circumstances have changed dramatically. All right, guys, double nymph break, just not producing. I'm gonna try to do something I've actually never done on Secret Stream A, interestingly, which is throw a streamer. <laughs> Nymphs and dry flies have actually been so productive for me on this stream that over the last number of years that I've fished it, I've never had a need to even put a streamer on. But uh, maybe today is that day. take big take very violent take what is this brown maybe it's gotta be a brown let's flip around so yeah it's a brown all right nice nice very violent take from this fish oh my gosh we have our first streamer eater here not bad get the measure net I can get an actual measurement on him here so this guy is right at about 11 inches this fish has one serious attitude all right let's let this guy go all right guys finally got a fish to the net I'll tell you what this stream has kicked my ass so far this morning and not a single fish to show for my efforts after conditions dramatically changed with that rainfall Came to this area here, where we have a large fallen log and a, presumably a, a, a decent sized pit probably underneath the little waterfall created by that log. And um, I'll tell you what, that brown took like a freight train, smashed that black woolly bugger. Thus far, the woolly bugger is the only thing that has brought fish to the net, so it's what I'm going to stick with. guys here we are the largest and deepest pool on the stream right at the base of a sizable waterfall caught fish out of this pool in a number of videos in the past you may remember it let's see if we can find a streamer eater in here I got a fish. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. It's got some pull to it. At first I thought I was snagged, but I felt the head shakes. Haven't seen it yet. It's a brown. All right. Nice. Beautiful fish. Second brown of the day. And boy, if it isn't a pretty one, let me tell you. Beautiful spots on it. All right, folks. So, we end it right here. Only two browns to the net. I don't want to be ungrateful about this. I'm happy to have brought two browns to the net. I could have walked away from this outing, haven't been skunked. That would have sucked. <laughs> but there's no question that two fish is a lot less than what I would have expected had conditions remained stable and I was fishing low flows and clearer water. So, kind of had this surprise high water episode thrown at me today. 
But I would say, to some extent, we prevailed, right? I mean, we at least did get some fish. I'm happy with that, but I think what I'm gonna do is make this a two-part episode. So, in a couple days, I'm gonna come back here when the high flows have subsided. The flows will probably have returned just about to the levels they were this morning, prior to the rain. The water will have cleared up, and we'll see how much differently this stream fishes under different circumstances. So until then, I have a walk back to my truck, but I will catch up with you guys in a couple days. Welcome back guys. Now it's only been uh, probably a few moments for you guys, but for me it has been almost exactly 48 hours of anticipation of getting back out here uh, when conditions returned to what they were um, when I set out here two days ago in the morning before that giant downpour. Flows have subsided, they've returned to normal, the water, I'm looking at it right now, is crystal clear once again. So, it should be very interesting to see what we come away with today now that conditions have so dramatically changed. We're gonna be fishing the exact same stretch of water that I was on the other day. The point where I'm at here, I've only gone maybe 100 feet in the stream. Uh, by the time we had gotten to this point a couple days ago, the the downpour had already made the stream rise to almost twice its typical level. Um, so we're fishing up through water that is dramatically different right now than it was 48 hours ago. I want to stay low here. You know, I didn't really have to worry about being too stealthy when the river was all muddy last time. Oh gosh, big take, oh my gosh. Huge dry fly take. This fish went downstream. Oh my gosh, he's racing around. Oh my gosh, insane, insane. This has got to be a wily brown. Oh my god. Yeah, you bet it is. All right, a nice brown. Nice brown. It's a beefy little fella. All right, guys, not too bad. A really quick start to the outing. A ferocious, splashy dry fly take on that elk hair caddis. And uh, I'll tell you what, there was no way something like that was going to happen with that muddy water and super high flows that uh, I experienced when we were out here a couple days ago. And I'm hoping that that is just a small sampling of what is to come on the stream today. Let's keep going. Wow, gorgeous spot here. Definitely caught fish in this spot before, but it's not yielding anything this time. All right. No sense in getting hung up trying to pull imaginary fish out of water that looks good, but just isn't fishing good. Gotta keep it moving. Yeah! Another top water tail. Oh! He got off. Fish was fighting like a madman. And he threw me. Dang. Oh! Gosh! Huge take on the dry fly. Basically just rolled the fish. The fish kind of rolled himself. Oh! That was brutal. All right, so, I mean, we've had way more signs of life thus far today than we did the entire outing last time. Um, but even still, I'm kind of considering a, a slight change to my rig here, namely that if we don't get some kind of take on the nymph pretty soon, I may just cut it off entirely and uh, just go with the Alcare Caddis. Got him. All right. Oh yeah. Nice fish. 
Hopefully we can get him to the net. Got him. Beautiful little brown. A ton of heart with this guy, and he took the nymph this time. So we do have a nymph taker. Not too bad. So second fish to the net, another brown. Uh, haven't bumped into any brookies yet. Another. Ooh, much smaller fish. This could be our first brookie of the day here. Yes, it is. Absolutely beautiful native here, guys. Just gorgeous. Well, if I wasn't just commenting that we conspicuously hadn't gotten a brookie yet. Very next fish after what, another like three or four casts. Not bad at all, guys, not bad at all. Three fish to the net, two out of this pool here right in front of me. All right, guys, well, this is kind of interesting. You will probably recall that this is the spot where I caught my first fish last time on a streamer, sort of right up underneath that log laying across the stream. So in the time that it took to get three fish to the net and lose another three or four fish on top of it, we had only had one fish last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big top water take. Oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it. Fish threw me. Oh, my rig was all tangled up. I'm sure that didn't help. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys. It can be heartbreaking sometimes to lose this many fish. But I'm actually going to go a little easy on myself here. I mean, the reality is, this is just how it is on small streams some days. Some days these fish are just wily. You're using really small hooks, especially when they're making violent takes on the top water. You know, the way they're gonna end up being hooked, it's anyone's guess. And um, sometimes you just lose a lot on brookie streams on certain days. I might lose 50% of the fish that I, that I stick. You know, they'll, they'll end up throwing the hook within a moment to just a couple seconds. It just goes that way sometimes. Hopefully we can put more in the net though. <laughs> Up the success rate just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, got, got one. God, these fish fight so frantically. It's a miracle I'm keeping any of them. Oh, he's got me. Shoot. Wrap me around a stick here. Yeah, he's gotta be gone by now. Yeah. Oh, nope. Oh my gosh, guys. He isn't gone. <laughs> he was completely wrapped around a stick. Where I wouldn't even have been able to get my rig out. And the fish somehow stayed in the hook. In spite of it being a little size 18, barbless, a zebra midge. This is a very stagnant area of the stream. Oh my gosh, I was just gonna say, the likelihood of getting a fish is very low, and I just hooked something big, guys. This is, a, this is a nice fish. This is a big fish. Oh man, I hope we can bring it to the net. I can't even imagine what it is. It's gotta be a nice brown. I mean, there's, it's too big to be a brookie. Too big to be a brookie. I'm gonna chase this fish down. I'll sacrifice the spot, I don't care. Oh, come on, I don't wanna lose him. Oh, I gotta keep his head out of the water here. Oh, it's a gorgeous fish. Gorgeous brown. Oh no, net fail. Oh gosh. I have my net upside down. Oh, come on. Come on. Yes. Beautiful brown. Absolutely beautiful fish. Biggest fish of the day by far. Fought like a warrior. See, I got the measure net here so we can get a measurement on this guy. And he is, let's see, five and eight. So 13 inch brown. Not bad at all. 
Well, damn guys, what a hell of a fish to bring to the net. You know, I mean, considering how much time I've been in the stream, the numbers that I've pulled down so far aren't too bad. It was just more a matter of me um, kind of wishing I didn't lose so many fish, but to have hooked that one. And, and mind you, by the way, at 13 inches, that, that fish is just about maxing out uh, on this stream. You know, based upon my uh, my years of experience fishing this stream, 14 is the biggest I've ever caught here. So at 13, he's just about maxed out for this water. And boy, what a gorgeous male brown. God, this is just awesome. You gotta love it, guys. Just gotta love it. Yes. Oh, nice little pool tucked away over here. Got him. snagged up in that damn tree. Gosh. Oh, look at this. Beautiful juvenile brown. And who knows, maybe one day he'll grow up to be like that 13 incher we caught just a little ways back downstream. But this was really the last little pocket before we get to really, to me, the defining area on this section of the stream. There's basically a big plunge pool up here. I've gotten some nice fish out of here before. I'm excited to see what we find up here. Now my strategy on this pool, generally during this time of the year, is to throw the dry dropper rig See if we can get any risers first. And after we've done a fair amount of casts, to switch over to a nymph rig and really dredge the bottom of the pool. Let's see what we could do here, guys. It is not uncommon that on my first cast into this pool with a dry dropper, when conditions are like this, we're gonna fish that'll race up, even from four feet deep, and snatch. Let's see. Yep. Got him. Ooh, this fish got some power. Oh my gosh, a lot of power on this fish. It's gotta be a nice brown. Oh my God, it's a tiger. It's a tiger trout. It's a tiger. Oh my gosh, and a wild tiger. Holy crap. Oh my God. An absolutely gorgeous wild tiger. Took that dry fly. Whoa. Good Lord. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my. Oh my. Oh wow, guys. Another wild tiger out of this stream, you know. <laughs> a wild tiger rises to the elk hair caddis out of this pool. Wow, just incredible. Wow. <laughs> Gotta love it, guys. Whew. So we've had quite a few natives now. Uh, we've had a 13 inch brown that fought like a bear. And we have had a wild tiger smash an elk hair caddis. Gosh, what an outing. What a last outing for the summer on Secret Stream A. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this pool here, see if we can find anything else. Got another fish. This one took the nymph. Now, this is a really interesting rookie because it's pale, a very unusually pale fish. It's almost like somebody just turned down the saturation on this fish to zero, but it kept all the patterning. So strange. Got one. Looks like another brookie. Now, 
Look at the night and day difference with the colors on this guy compared to the colors in the last rookie. Just amazing, right? I mean, this fish is as vibrant as they come. So isn't that kind of fascinating, guys? Compare those last two brookies that I got, right? They came out of the very same pool, very same stream, both unquestionably wild brook trout. And yet look at how dramatically different the coloration was between those two fish. One, you know, would make a box of Crayola crayons jealous with all the color that was on it. And the other was, again, it almost, it almost looked like it was from a frame of a, of a black and white movie or something. I mean, there was almost no color in that fish. And this is one of the reasons why I try to caution people not to put too much stock in color as an indication of whether or not a fish is wild. Because the truth of the matter is, you could pull two wild fish of the same species out of a spot right beside each other, and they can look dramatically different. I am highly skeptical that we're gonna pull even more fish out of this, out of this spot. But you never do know. Let's run the streamer through and see what we can find. Whoa, just had like a little three inch trout follow the streamer. Like he was gonna show it who's boss. The streamer's almost as big as he is. Got one. Stream reader. Brookie. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Look at that. Clobbered that streamer. Just awesome. Just awesome, guys. Can I believe we got another fish out of this pool? I'm actually kind of curious to get another temperature reading. I got one this morning, but I'm curious to get one now that we're kind of in midday. Now yeah, look at that, guys. We're right down at about 64 degrees, we're at 63.7. Perfectly suitable temperature for these trout. Um, and it probably will be another couple weeks, honestly, before it reaches 68. That being said, I think this probably is the last time that I'm gonna be hitting Secret Stream A for the summer. What an incredible outing on Secret Stream A today. Right, I mean, gorgeous. 13 inch brown, tons of native brookies, and even a wild tiger trout on the dry. Whew, hard to beat, hard to beat. And isn't it fascinating how much differently this river fished today under arguably normal conditions for this time of year as compared to two days ago when I was dealing with insane, nearly flash flood conditions on this stream. Sometimes the conditions make a world of difference and I adapted the best that I could to those rapidly changing conditions and came away with a couple fish. But giving this stream 48 hours to calm on back down, you see why I was maybe not quite thrilled with just two fish that day, right? <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I'm not going to ramble any further. I'm about to pack my stuff up, head up out of the gorge here, and start getting back to my truck. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, especially that wild tiger, huh? If you did, please press that thumbs up button. It helps out a lot. If you enjoyed watching, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys next time.